السلام عليكم طبعا بداية I'd like to thank uh, TQ Pharma for giving me this opportunity to present this lecture I think there is an echo huh? صوت مو واضح uh, I'm still an associate professor uh, we have our professor Dr. Adolf Nayan inshallah we will follow his steps inshallah <laughs> and uh, we are pleased to have our colleagues here Dr. Ali Rashid he's also uh, Dr. Adel both are well known to the interest of uh, andrology and erectile dysfunction. So uh, I will not give details, actually the talk is so uh, big, so I will skip so many, but I will concentrate on a few things. So uh, the idea of Tadalafil multi-use is actually something we need to be aware of, and this is the purpose of the talk. So generally we know Tadalafil is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, type number five, which actually uh, prevents the breakdown of uh, cyclic G GMP and then you have more of cyclic GMP. Uh, erectile dysfunction, as you all know, this is from the Mass General uh, Aging Study, but in our series and everybody's own experience, which actually we have not published, uh, this is a common condition, erectile dysfunction. So I would say probably something similar, but maybe more, since we have diabetes as a common risk factor. So it's a prevalent condition. The pathophysiology is well known to all of you, multiple diseases, this is organic causes, I'll skip that because it's well known. The idea is very simple, if you have smooth muscle relaxation, increased blood flow, and then you will have uh, uh, erection. If you don't have significant relaxation, then you will have uh, uh, erectile dysfunction. And this is actually something interesting, the people who mentioned the venous leak as a, an anatomical entity. This has proved to be a failure since venous ligation surgery in probably 95% is unsuccessful. And even Tom Lou, who started this procedure, has stopped doing it. And when the patient comes to you telling you, I have venous leak, and then they have in their mind that they may require venous ligation, tell them it's not the veins, it's the tissue which is not expanding enough, and that's why the veins are leaking, except in very rare cases. So uh, diagnosis, most of the cases that we see are organic uh, and there are good percentage of psychogenic. I think most of our patients have a mixed element. Even patients who have organic cause, they have a, a, a stress-related condition. And when somebody's wife, I, I remember that case very well, somebody's wife, uh, the husband actually, uh, the wife told the husband, you are not a man. The guy got upset and he divorced his wife after 25 years of marriage and he came for a penile implant. Imagine, like, so much distressing. So always don't underestimate the psychological part. Uh, so the PDE5, you all know that it's not one drug, different drugs. I know that uh, TQ want to see uh, Redix. You will see it soon. But the idea started in 1998 with sildenafil. Sildenafil originally is actually an anti-angina drug. Then they found it causes uh, smooth muscle relaxation, and then it is the treatment of choice. Then it was followed by Vardanafil, which is Levitra, and then came Cialis, and then there is Avanafil, which is not very popular in this area. So our talk will concentrate on Tadalafil mainly. So this is Redix, you see it. Actually, in 2017, Lily uh, lost or actually gave up its patent for Tadalafil, and then all other companies worldwide. So Redix with respect to our colleagues in Georgia, is not the only generic. You have worldwide uh, generics coming from uh, Tadalafil, which attests that this is a useful drug. Uh, some ideas about the pharmacokinetic. I think this is very interesting to remember. The specific ideas about Tadalafil, uh, when you have a, a high BMI or an elderly individual or patient with smoking, this has been studied. The pharmacokinetic does not change with Tadalafil. Also, Tadalafil is 700 times more uh, selective to PDE5, which is mainly concentrated in smooth muscles of the penis, than uh, the PDE6, which is in the retina. So that's why you don't see very often uh, retinal side effects. The half-life, as you all know, it's actually up to 16 to 17 hours and can reach 37, uh, 36 hours. And actually, if you use it regularly, you can get a steady state actually after uh, several days, after not only the first day. Uh, the earliest effect of Tadalafil was you know, reported to be 15 minutes. 
the average is two hours. Uh, this is just part of the pharmacokinetics. And actually, because it has slow hepatic clearance, the volume of distribution is low, it is 80% bioavailable, and this which prolongs the half-life of the drug, which makes it actually a more choice, uh, better choice drug. And looking to comparison, there is actually no head-to-head -head, uh, uh, very detailed uh, study to prove which PDE5 inhibitor is superior, but there has been some publications looking at the patient satisfaction when they randomized them to sildenafil versus tadalafil, and they found that the patient and their partners preferred tadalafil versus sildenafil. So this is just something to keep in your mind when you choose. Tadalafil has, as the Western people always mention this, I think this is a key element. It relieves the stress of being prepared, especially when you talk about daily tadalafil. So you don't have to think that, did I take the drug? Do I have full stomach like you have to do that? with Viagra and also with Levitra. So Tadalafil absorption is not altered with food, so that's why you can take it anytime. So it's good in the weekend. You have more chances to have a, a sexual relationship uh, frequently when you're free as this uh, cat. It's very important to counsel the patient about the side effects. I remember very well, I had a patient who was young. I feel he had a psychogenic element and I gave him Tadalafil and then he came to me two days with severe leg pain, he cannot walk. And then he said, what is this? So he was so upset, he doesn't know. And another patient has back pain, he went to orthopedic doctor. So I routinely counsel the patient with the most common side effects. I tell him, you may have a headache, n n blocked or stuffy nose, a heartburn and back and l l muscle pain. So this is, if you tell the patient, then this thing is very tolerated. There was actually a study I did not put here, how to minimize the side effect of myalgia, which is actually two theories. One of them, it actually acts against phosphodiesterase 11, which is more prominent in the muscles. The other one is, is you know, uh, vasodilation in the muscles as well, which can cause pain. Anyway, so it can cause muscle pain. So the way to deal with the muscle pain, you tell the patient it is temporary, it will take two to three days. If it does not go away, then if you start with a higher dose, restart after a week with a lower dose. Give him the same time. I tell them to do that. I give them paracetamol, especially patients with headache, plus you can give them non-steroidal. So this has actually been studied. Non-steroidal plus Tadalafil, plus of actually muscle relaxant like muscadol and Norgesic or other drugs for a week and then the side effect will go away. So this way you can keep them on the drug. This is actually very rare serious complication, non-arthritic uh, uh, ischemic optic neuropathy. Uh, this has been reported more with sildenafil. Uh, it is a risk factor that the patient has to be aware. Generally, the FDA, what it does actually is, you know, follows the patient who took the drug, and then if somebody reported any ophthalmological complication, they put it as, as a possible side effect. But it, in reality, these patients have not many of them, but the reported FDA side effects were not actually studied. So it's not very specific, but the theory is actually there is retinal hypotension. So if you have a patient who is diabetic with history of retinopathy, it's better to counsel the ophthalmologist before giving them PDE5 inhibitors. The story of Cialis and or actually Tadalafil and BPS, so the people with Redix do not get angry when I say Cialis, is it's actually an interesting theory. Why, and this is, I, I think I'll skip this. The BPH is a common condition. You all know that. Uh, how the differential diagnosis is not very significant. So look at the patient's quality of life when they have BPH. They have changes in their life. They drink less. They have to go to the toilet. They have nocturia. They fall. They cannot drink during, drink during the day. So they have problems. So they need help. So one thing we learned is that when you get a BPH patient who gives you a lot of symptoms, ask him about uh, erectile dysfunction symptoms. If you don't ask him, he may not offer you. And then you can think of giving a medication which can solve both problems. And this is actually which has been studied. So in general, there are interrelated conditions. Many theories you know, postulate that they are one single etiology, but we can say easily that it's interrelated conditions. Around 60% of patients with BPH will have erectile dysfunction. The other way around, patients with erectile dysfunction, 50% of them, they have BPH. 
many theories and at the end you can treat these conditions with one drug which is the phosphodiesterase inhibitors and actually the most publications about this condition was on Tadalafil the other drugs like Sildenafil, Vardanafil has been tried and they showed efficacy the big advantage as you know of Tadalafil is the long duration of action which makes it more useful one common concern urologists have that if I give this with alpha blocker would that cause hypotension or cause sequences Consequences. Actually, this has been studied in different publications, and it's usually safe, and it's more efficacious. Uh, so this is one of the theories that you may have PD-5 uh, in the uh, detrusor muscle, in prostatic urethra, and also in the vasculature in the pelvic area. So you may have erectile dysfunction. Uh, this is the integrated theory that when you, how to approach these patients, when somebody presents to you with BPH on LUTs, ask him about ED and vice versa. And uh, the medical management, this is one publication which has proved that Tadalafil 5 milligram improved LUTs and also improved erectile function. Interestingly, this has been shown, the LUTs improvement, both objectively by the IPSS, and there was one interesting article looking at the urodynamic effects, that even the over overactivity obstructive findings in urodynamics has been improved, you know, found to be improved after Tadalafil. This is again another study, so multiple trials and studies confirming that Tadalafil is a drug for LUTs symptoms. Uh, this is an interesting thing which I put in the middle to change the talk. Let's say you prescribe Tadalafil on demand, which is either 10 milligram, which we don't have here, or 20 milligram, and, and then the patient did not respond. How do you salvage this condition? The answer, you can put him on a regular Tadalafil as proven by this study. So if you fail, one thing, an interesting topic is tachyphylaxis. Does Tadalafil lose its efficacy with time? The answer is no. But what happens when they do not respond is usually the disease is progressing or they have other unmodifiable risk factors like obesity, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, peripheral vascular disease. I think I'll skip that. So when we look at that, the, the, the conclusion of that article, when you have patients who fail on demand Tadalafil, they, if you put them on a daily Tadalafil, they improve significantly. This is another study which looked at the uh, use of Tadalafil for BPH in men with and without erectile dysfunction. Like, is it different when somebody has, we are dealing with LUTs. If they have ED, do they do better? The answer, they both improve. There is no difference. So it's a useful drug for LUTs regardless of uh, uh, ED. This is the conclusion of these things. Uh, I will change the topic and just give you an idea. When I mentioned Tadalafil is a, a magic drug, so how can we use it? other than erectile dysfunction and BPH. There has been many articles looking at Tadalafil in treatment of CNS diseases. And this is actually an animal study and there are ongoing trials looking in the role of Tadalafil in certain conditions like Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis patients and stroke patients. Also, it's well known that radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer is a risk factor for erectile dysfunction. And especially, even when you have a nerve sparing radical prostatectomy, you're prone to erectile dysfunction. So how can you uh, preserve erection in these individuals? The, this is a, an interesting, well-known article published by Dr. Montorsi from Italy that they gave Tadalafil daily, and it showed that they improved their erection and, uh, as we call it, rehabilitation program. So this is one of the interesting areas that you can use Tadalafil specifically to rescue their erectile function. Does Tadalafil has any role in cases of Peyronie's disease? The answer is yes. This is very controversial topics. Many authorities who deal with Peyronie's, they say no. But ideally, if you look at animal experiments, this gives you a true idea. And even in clinical trials, Jerry Brock from Canada also published his paper in patients with Peyronie's disease and looked at the fibrosis in the septum with Tadalafil daily. Coming after six weeks, the fibrosis decreased with Tadalafil. So that's an antifibrotic effect as well. Interesting idea, Alzheimer's disease. So it's a magic drug. So this is actually has been proven in, in, in animal studies, multiple animal studies. And since Alzheimer has no definitive strong treatment, Tadalafil is under trial 
for this indication as proven by animal studies. Originally, as I said, PDE5 drugs were anti-anginal drugs, so they are used for angina. Obviously, the only strong, well-known contraindication is not to use them with nitrates, since they can cause profound hypotension. And the mortalities reported with PED5 were mainly in these areas, or patients were undiagnosed to have ischemic heart disease. Very interesting indication is the pulmonary hypertension, especially with the right side, and especially in the pediatric uh, age group. So it's a useful drug in certain cardiovascular diseases as well. And typically, these drugs are lifelong. And one question is, does Tadalafil long term, if you use it for ED, cause any chronic consequences? The answer based on these trials is usually no. So it's a safe drug on the long term as well. In conclusion, so Tadalafil, which is Redex in our group here, is a useful drug commonly used for erectile dysfunction and lower urinary tract symptoms. It has other indications, as we mentioned, in cardiovascular disease. It probably has an, an indication to improve the endothelial function in patients with Peyronie's disease and also in patients which, where we do not find any identifiable cause of erectile dysfunction. Originally, we mentioned them as, as uh, venous leak. They typically have endothelial dysfunction, so it is the drug of choice in these individuals. Thank you very much. Raman, I will give a uh, couple, uh, before you talk, uh, I will give m my personal humble experience using Tadalafil uh, in patients with erectile dysfunction. I'll just give you what I found, and hopefully we can publish this finding, is that when somebody walks to you, especially young individuals, the common practice that we all do is give Tadalafil 5 milligram. But when they fail, what do you do? The answer is actually escalate the dose and then give 10, two tablets, we don't have the 10, then give 20, and then when they escalate, when they don't, I, I even combine, so you can combine PDE5, other PDE5 inhibitors like Viagra or Verdenafil, and they do well with this thing. This is just a personal experience point of view. In, in your personal experience, Adalafil, uh, Cialis, daily dosing, erectile like, uh, function, does it have the same efficacy as Radix, 5 milligram daily? Uh, I have to mention that uh, Personally, and I mentioned that, I don't know. Honest, yes, yes, I will be honest. I've used uh, five milligram Redex, and if you look at the size of the pill, and I mentioned that, uh, whoever listened to me, Gitalik, the Cialis, the Lily, is more efficacious in my practice. I tried both. So when I asked the company, what exactly is the explanation? The 20 is very efficacious, even the size of the pill. If you compare five milligram Lily, five milligram Redex you'll sign the size of the pill is smaller in Redix. So I felt there's something not actually. Uh, uh, Redix size is smaller than the Cialis 5 milligram. So they told me their study was based on the 20 milligram. So I think this has to be done if, if uh, TQ want to pursue this further, I think they have to do a randomized trial. And it's very easy to be done in Kuwait, you have a good number of cases. But then it may have a negative impact, but at least it will improve the effic efficacy of the drug. Because imagine, you have a placebo effect. If you have many of these patients who have psychogenic elements, you tell them, even any pill, they may improve. So I feel, in, I, when I use it, I use it so many times, Redix, when I get like a Nuqtahadi. This is not uh, to insult your company, but I think the five milligram Redix is less efficacious in my practice than five milligram Cialis. But sure, do you look for the bioequivalent study compared La, to the But the bioequivalent study, and I got, I got the answer from the company. They told me it was done on the 20, not the five. They just did it pharmacologically, took the five, this is five, and use it. And it's not, in my practice, not the same. So I don't know if you will have an answer for that yeah, in the future. Yeah. If your company is willing, I can participate in a randomized trial. I have patients, Dr. Adel can participate, we can make a group, and it, we can randomize it. It's very easy to be done. In, in three months, we can give you a good number of cases, and then we can see, it's very simple. Just we have this questionnaire, we follow the patient, We'll select the group of patients. We want the benefit, actually, because let me give you, I think uh, our colleague, yani, uh, well, famous urologist, Dr. Kehinde, I don't know if you remember, he published a paper about generic ciprofloxacin compared to ciprobay, which is the original buyers. And he found in a study which he published, he died, unfortunately, that the generic ciprofloxacin was less efficacious because you still have bacteria in treated individuals 
while we're, they were sensitive. So I think there is a problem with some genetics. I'm not saying TQ has a problem. Some genetics companies, because it's a very big business, they may not sell you every element of the you know, raw material. The raw, the raw material, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not manufactured in Jordan, right? Yeah, yeah. Material you can Jordan. talk it in the other. You can body parts. You can talk it. Show in the it's part. not, it's yeah. not yeah. locally produced. No, no. It's yeah. from Polypharma. Pola. Polypharma. Pola. Imi Abru. European Abru. From uh, I hope the, you don't get offended. Let's have a discussion. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, Thank you.